uh, the innovation time is here. It's the creative and innovative hour. Creative and innovative hour. Please uh, go and share the message with your friends. Is this Nishiwane? I need not be seen. It's not sure. So go share the message with your uh, friends and family, and uh, go share it also in the inbox. So let's share. Let's sh uh, share it in the inbox as well, and let everybody, uh, you know, come and be a part of this uh, innovative hour. I have a young man with me who is just twenty. Are you just twenty-four? 22, who is just 22 years old. And, um, you know, but I'm so impressed by his work and what he's doing. I can't even remember who recommended you to me. How did I get to know about you? Do you know? Uh, I shared a survey. Uh, I, I think about our natural studies in Nigeria. The influence of Brian on voters' decision in Nigeria. Right. So, um, I am doing the research with my professor in school. After the alleged bribery in um, AKT and uh, Oshun. Oshun. Yeah, tell us, tell us about, tell us about that, about that your survey. Well, I approached my professor after the news of the bribery was broken, and I mean it is very disturbing in this time to have such problems in our democracy. So. I spoke to the professor and they agreed to help me with the research design and we came up with the design and I, I needed to share the survey the, just there in him and that's it. <laughs> so, the, yeah, yeah, tell us about the survey, the nature of the survey because not everybody saw the survey. Well, the methodology used is called the snowboard methodology. So I sent the survey link to a person, a Nigerian, and I expect the, Nigeria, the Nigerian to send to other Nigerians. So like that, it keeps going. So, because that's the best way to reach uh, Nigerians at a very low cost. In Nigeria? The Nigerians in Nigeria? The Nigerians anywhere in the world. Okay. Because we are not reaching those directly affected with this situation of accepting bribes, because it's going to be expensive, it's going to um, get there, and they are in, it's inaccessible. You don't know who they are. So the best way to do it is to send the link to Nigerians, and the Nigerian will send to other Nigerians, and like that it keeps going, and we get as many Nigerians as possible to fill the survey about the problem and the possible solutions. So but how do you get your report? How do you know how many people fill the survey? Yes. So we're using a, an innovative platform called SurveyMonkey.com. So different. Companies use that for getting research uh, data. They, they have analytics on the software, so they have everything. So once you fill the survey, I would know your gender, I would know your you are Nigerian, I would know what your response to the survey is, and I can see that across everyone that fills it. So wow. I know fifty percent male, thirty percent female, for instance, like that, and I know thirty percent said yes. Voters um, are influenced positively by bribery and maybe like that. Yeah. So, how what? But it has that then means that this kind of survey is mostly objective because it's people themselves talking, right? Yes. Yes. People are providing solutions openly and also from. I mean, from research, there are six solutions to this problem. For instance, legal consequences, fine. What is that platform again? Please, can you write that platform? Please listen to that platform again. What is that platform you're talking about? Survey Monkey. Survey Monkey. Yeah, they just went public. IPO. They made the initial public offering, and now they are the, <laughs> they are the shares. On New York, New York Stock Exchange. Yes, yes. So, so anybody can go on that platform. Yes. And cool. is it only survey? Is it only questions? Basically, you, you can create uh, surveys and get analytics. So they will also give you the analytics. So you don't need to um, analyze it anymore because from the survey you have a real time um, analytics to the survey. So okay, for example, if I want to know. 
who will win the Nigerian presidential election. Even Facebook has such poll where people can just click their choice and. Yeah, but the Facebook poll, the Facebook poll is only available to Nigerians who are on Facebook, right? Who will come yeah. to that Facebook? But this one you are talking about, I guess, is from is it by telephone or by website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still need the internet. So these are these are the limitations. You still need the internet access to get the survey and fill it. But this particular research process, I'm not asking about the problem directly. I'm asking from people. What is your assessment of the problem? What are the possible solutions? And there's an open um, possibility for you to just provide the solution beyond the options provided. So, the Nigerians, how do you perceive this problem and what are the possible solutions, basically? Okay. And so, what do you think, what will you think the political or social effects of that your effort? What what result will you think it yielded you? Well, I, I'm not in the survey. I tried as much as possible not to um, mention any political party. It's electoral studies. Already, I have some other publications from different countries. For instance, how the UK and the US overcame this issue of bribery. So I'm going to also reference those articles in the publication because it will be published on a journal, a trust studies journal, elsewhere. So, it's not just looking at it from one angle. I'm going to get this of it, but I'm also going to reference other um, publications on this issue. But so from that... can have an informed perspective of the problem. But from, so from this survey, the, does it show that the two parties are culprits? Yes. Yes. In fact, 99% of the people said that, yes, there is bribery in Nigeria. So, which means... There are videos already of that, so it's crystal clear. But in the research process, before you make conclu uh, conclusion, you also have to verify from people. Is there bribery? Yes. Then, what are the effects? Does this bribery let people vote in favor or against this party? Or does this make even discourage them from the political process? So that's what we're trying to find out. And what are the possible solutions we provide against these political parties and against the people accepting bribery? And actually, the revelations so far are actually shocking. Because what I've seen is that the thinking of the average <laughs> Nigerian is short sighted, unfortunately. And uh, for instance, they, 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 they provided short-term solutions to the problem instead of long-term solutions. So that, that revelation but is the, shocking. The, but, but the reason why people could be bribed is mm. also because it's not just the problem of politicians, but the problem of our people too. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Now, the problem is with the short-term sightedness. So they are short-sighted. They are myopic. So they don't see the problem... As ten years, and I've seen it as now. now. So the decision uh, just going to consider now. And engage with because you are looking at things only from the short term perspective of with the one thousand or two. Look the next four years. Okay, so, uh, but some people say it's because there is poverty in the country, but I want to feel that it is also, it's not just because of poverty, but there is poverty of the mind and poverty of values. I think it's poverty because, of the mind. yeah, no, exactly. no value system, no genuine value system uh, uh, in, the la in the land. People don't have integrity. Exactly. And, I mean, you've, you've said it all. It's just the mind. Everything starts and ends with the mind. <laughs> and um, once we start reorientating ourselves towards the right ethics and the right value system, regardless of if we are hungry or not, I believe we would overcome as a nation and 
would restore, would regain our position in the world? No, if you say 90%, do you say 90%? Yeah, I mean, over 90% acknowledge that there's bribery. So if 90% of the people are being bribed and they are taking the bribe in Nigeria, then there no, is no, no, no need... Huh? They acknowledge to the fact that bribery is going on. Yeah, so how much, how many percentage are they, no, do you think will be willing to take bribe? Well, the focus was not on <laughs> the percentage that would be willing to take bribe but on the problem and possible solutions to this issue because it's it's no an because if the coming, if if yeah. for example if it's only 1% that takes bribe it's so insignificant that it cannot sway the election but if it yes, is 90 also, if it is 90% that will be willing to take bribe hmm. or 50% then the problem is that people like the new generation presidential candidates who don't have the money to give out, it means that they will never be elected. Yes. No, because if the people, most people are willing to take bribe, it means anybody that doesn't have money will not be respected. Yes. It means yes. they are going so to be said, you yes. don't, how can, why should I vote for you? You didn't give me any, look at the people that, I mean, I would rather give to the higher bidder that, you know, these people are giving me something they, you know, they pay me higher. Why should I pay for, I mean, why should I, that you are not serious? So it means that people who, are, who don't have money don't have political future. Yes. Or yes, you don't, right. or we you are not coming to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. We need to reorientate our people. We need to inform them with data, research method and strategies. It's really important because nowadays the truth no longer tells itself. You need research methods to show the truth. <laughs> So, you know, because this thing you are, we are talking about is very significant because, very. Uh, but because uh, for me, he's telling me like this. People like Shoure, Mogalu, Fela Durotoye, and other people, it means we already know the outcome that they will not win. Mm. You know, because they are not good enough, because, but because they will not have the money to be able to sp spread around. Or you don't think so? I think so. I think we need to reorientate ourselves as people because in my engagement with people, some Nigerians, I mean, even as young as myself, some of them are thinking of getting to the position of power and stealing. And I'm saying, no, this is not right. You know, you cannot keep thinking the, the same way and expect a different result. You should stand out. You should have your values, stick by it, do what is right. And you leave the rest for God, you know? So we need to reorientate ourselves when we have the chance to do so, talk about these issues. And from this speaking, even if you can't convince someone totally, you plant a seed of reflection, which could translate to a change in behavior and actions of our citizens. OK, your research work that you have done, this whole analysis that you did, how do you think it could help Nigeria? Good. First, the results of this research could inform lawmakers. For instance, we, we asked Nigerians, what possible actions should you take against parties giving bribery? The options were as follows. Total ban of the party, um, monetary fines, cancel of that specific election, no solutions, then open response. Most of them chose just the ban of that specific election. And lesser percentage chose a total ban of the party. So that means most of them chose a short-term solution to the problem, which is the cancellation of just that specific election. If we're looking at it from the long-term perspective, so capital intense punishment, most, I expect most Nigerians should to choose total ban of the party. Like that once you know, oh, this party would get banned if we, we are investigated and found wanting in terms of giving bribe. Then they would shy from such act. So we need to reorientate ourselves on these problems. We need to 
discuss these issues and hopefully it would help lawmakers, it would help Nigerians know the position of people in terms of what they think. And then we can from there take more informed decisions in the future. Beautiful. Now let's talk about other things that you are doing. I, I, that is just one of the things you do. But you are very multifaceted. Yes. And, yeah, yes. multifaceted. How, how have you become so multifaceted like that? It's like, if I get it right, that it's like you are studying three degrees at the same time. Yes. Tell me yes. about, first of all, tell me about yourself. Who is okay. uh, Adeniro Adeneko? Ade Diron, Ade Lekon. Ade Diron, well, <laughs> Ade... Wait, wait, wait. Ade Diron, Ade Lekon. <laughs> Am I right now? Yes, sir. Uh, All close? <laughs> you, you, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm a Nigerian. I'm 22 years old. I study in Poland. And I study medicine. But also, I'm studying complementarily masters in business administration for the healthcare, and also masters in public administration. The reason why I think business is important is because of value creation. So even if you are a lawyer, you are a businessman, you are a doctor, you are an engineer, the business of it is really important. It does not have to be unethical, but business is really important. And the reason why I'm studying public administration also is because I think. The public, on a macro scale, affects all our lives. And it's important to have the knowledge about public administration. Politics or business shouldn't be something um, people shy from. We, sh we all should have substantial knowledge on these aspects because they are very instrumental in deciding what happens to us and how we, our life um, it's, it's so you are interested in politics too? Yes, I'm interested in good governance. I'm interested in public administration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You say> politics. <laughs> it's okay. You are, okay, you are interested in good politics. Yes, good politics. <laughs> now, but, but also, you know, you've been very exceptional in your... In, in your four years in Europe so far, from my information that I have here, I see that, uh, you know, despite the fact that you are doing three degrees at the same time, you have also represented two research communities as their ambassador. Tell me about that. Well, research again is very important because research at any level should guide strategic tactical and operational decisions. As an ambassador of these communities, I encourage research. I spoke to my colleagues, the younger ones, and tried to you know, inspire them. This is important. You meet in some of these congresses, you meet professors, you get inspired to why you should research. You know? And by researching, you create value. And by creating value, you commercialize value. So it's really important. And um, also, you build your social and intellectual capital by associating with such communities. Yeah, but how come? I, I guess you are working, I mean, you are studying together with uh, Europeans, with uh, Polish people, right? Uh, well, mostly international students Maybe, from mostly. Canada, from the UK, from Saudi Arabia, from. So international students. Yes, because so, it's um, English. What, what are the criteria for you to be selected to become ambassador of these uh, groups? Yes, of course, they will check your um, academic standing. They will check your enthusiasm. They will check your communication skills. They will check your other curricular activities. So it's like you do one thing, and because of you've done one thing, it gives you the opportunity to do another thing. So it's actually very interesting the way these things work. So that's basically it. your academic performance, your extracurricular engagement, and the other curricular activities you've. So you are doing well in your school, in your studies? Yes, yeah, definitely. Def in all my studies. <laughs> okay, how come? So you are doing well in the three universities you are studying in? Yes, outstanding. 
outstandingly yes. well. Yes, yes. That is interesting. Uh, what made you to be so serious? Because, for example, when I was in Nigeria, in, second, in primary mm. school, in fact, I didn't even remember how I got from primary one to primary six. So I was not, <laughs> not good. Well, I think, I think it's, it's all about vision. Because at what point, at what point did you wake up, so to say? Or you had always been the genius one from primary to secondary and to university? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider myself genius, but yeah, with all modesty, I'm doing okay. <laughs> well, did this start from primary well, to second, or in secondary or in university? I've, I've always been, I've always been a good student. In my high school, Babinson College Nursing Seminary, I was fifth in my class, and I was a prefect. I was biology lab prefect. So I studied chemical engineering for two years in Nigeria, and we had six months strike, ASU strike, six months. And it was during that period I left Nigeria to Poland. So when I got to Poland, of course, Poland is in the European Union. What school, what school was that in Nigeria? University of Lagos. And you were striking for six months? Six months. That was when I left. I got admission abroad and I left. I studied in, chem I studied in University of Lagos for two years. Chemical engineering. It's terrible. So then you left to Europe. Yes. So at that particular point, what was the... Yeah, was there any change in you or was yeah. there any... Yes. Then you, you begin to appreciate opportunity. You okay. know, when you are in an environment that appreciates you, an, env an environment that supports you, okay, you want to, to maximize all the opportunities available. So you become mm. a maximalist, <laughs> yes, like one yes. of my friends called it. So yes. you want to take everything, you want to do research, you want to do well in school, you want to meet people, you want to create, you want to get as much as you can mm -hmm. before the end of your studies. Because at the end of the day, they just give you a degree or oh, you're a doctor, or you're a businessman, if you don't have complementary um, experience... Qualifications, uh, experiences. They would be of no use, mm. at least not as quick, as quickly as um, you should have them. So. Yeah, that degree would be of no use. Because yes. what, but what, what really fascinated me about you, and I was even talking to... Uh, one of my disciples here, the one that you know very well, we'll talk about that a few minutes. <laughs> you know, you, you, we are talking about the fact that most people that I met here, this is what fascinated me most about you. Because most Nigerians that I meet here, for some funny reason, 90% of them are studying medicine. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is, but they don't know anything about life. So they don't have the thing, at least the ones I've met one-on-one -on -one know. Yeah, you yeah. know, they don't have the thing that you have, which is mm -hmm. they are doing well in their studies, in school work, but they don't have those complementary and, uh, com you know, and uh, subsidiary knowledge that could make them to be competitive <laughs> and to be, uh, to be relevant for in, at the larger society. But I think that, you know, your, the story of a man, the secret of a man is in their story. And mm. the, this, this history of somebody and their story make them. I think maybe that your experience of, you know, the, you know, two years in Nigerian university where there are no opportunities at all, where you could Terrible. not even, you know, mm. maximize yourself. I think God used that for your good. Mm. You were able to mm. take the right decision by now going everywhere, taking... Mm. I don't know if you, in your own country, in your old Poland, where you are now, in your school... Mm. Do you see students like this too, like that, like I'm talking about here, who are just mainly in their medicine and nothing more? Yes, definitely. We have students like that, and I really don't blame them. It's all about what you like. It's about your focus and your vision, because your vision drives your immediate decisions. So I don't have anything against students that just stick to medicine. I also, most likely, I'm going to practice. <laughs> But um, I, I am doing what I like. My dad was also worried, like, how can you combine medicine with business administration in the healthcare industry and all these degrees? How are you doing all these things? He was worried. I had to send him my results. I said, okay, you can call the school, you know, because he was worried. He, he doesn't understand how you can, you know, combine all these things. So for me, I think it's all about the vision. It's all about the drive. If you really enjoy it, for me, I enjoy it. So. 
And I think every, everyone, to, uh, everyone should stick to what they like. Now, you are talking about what they like, and you say you don't have anything against people who just stick to the... But maybe you are not getting the point I'm making. The okay. point that I'm trying okay. to make is that it doesn't matter what, whether it's medicine you study, or journalism like me, or you <laughs> study literature, or you study engineering. If, the, if you are limited just to the book degree, to the classroom education, hmm. then you are limited in life. That's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. What I'm trying exactly. to say is that I meet people, okay, for example, I meet uh, these st students who are excellent students in their class work, medicine. One of them, I, I, I go, told him to write me, told her to write me an article. And it's full of mistakes. Uh, and I say, what is the problem here? <laughs> then the person tell me, oh, I didn't like literature or English. It's not my uh, area. I am only... But I said, no, this is not about that. Okay, for example, let me even not say that. Let me, let me do something very simple. Let's say I say, what is the... What, I mean, something happened in Cairo. This person cannot tell me where Cairo is. Another one. At least another person. He doesn't know where Cairo is. Uh, okay, what is, the, what is the capital of uh, South Africa? No idea. Okay, where is, uh, you know, what is Venezuela? Oh, maybe it's in Asia South somewhere. South Africa. This, I mean, this is not one person, two person, no. This is like, you know, maybe 90% of Nigerians that I met. They don't know anything apart from their schoolwork. But that way, you are not functional. Or, okay, yeah. let me even tell you another example. Many of the people that come, they don't work on computer. They use, all of them have devices, but they don't work on computer normally. Because mm -hmm. you, you write articles or you write paper, you write letter without a uh, paragraph, without, you know, even though you are medical, what kind of professional, you will, what kind of professional will you be? Or for example, mm -hmm. you ask them, what is the budget of Nigeria? Nobody knows. What is our GDP? Nobody knows. Uh, what was, uh, you know, just something about life, about real mm. life, something that will, you know, that will inform you that you are educated. Mm. What the point I'm trying to make is that education is not book degree. Education is your enlightenment. You know, education is supposed to give you the reasons, I mean, the, exactly. the, the ability to reason and the mm. ability to ask questions and the ability to make conclusions. Hmm. But these people cannot reason outside of their book work or just um, the only Informed thing they know, if I ask them any other question outside of their book work, the thing they will be able to tell me uh, who is Nollywood actress, who is, uh, <laughs> no, who is the people who are joking, who are laughing, uh, Comedian. comedians, who are the comedians that are popular, who are the pastors that are reigning, what are the dress they are wearing, those are rubbish stuff kind of thing that is what is in their head. So this is why you surprise me a lot. Because you surprise me that you are doing medicine and you are also doing politics, understanding public and doing degree in it, and also business and public health. And you want to now combine public health, medicine, and business together. And then be able to commercialize that and add value. You are thinking far ahead of the classroom. You get what I'm trying to say now? Yes, yes. So the general knowledge that equips you for life, self-education, mm. I want to hear your opinion about that, if you all appreciate what I'm talking well, about. Well, I really appreciate what you're saying, because now you're talking about the worldview. Yes. I think Limo Galu always emphasized. Yes. I mean, going beyond what is expected is not something that our system and our culture has trained us to... to Seek, because when you look at it, with all respect to my dad and mom, they've really supported me, and you know, but at times they get scared, you know, like, is this not too much, you know? So our culture as a way of limiting us, the the perception of people as a way of limiting us, and these are the type of reorientation we need to make, you know, to our people. We need to start talking about these things. You can go beyond what is expected in from in the career level in in all aspects so i mean if you can ride a bicycle and drive a car why can't you learn business and learn medicine at the same time you know 
we need to reorientate our people, and I think that's just the way forward. <laughs> because I like, you know, looking at solutions also to problems. So hopefully we would we we'll get to that stage where we are open-minded and fluid in um, in, as, in assessing and solving situations. Yeah, that's what I've discovered here, that the students that finish from here who are able to think outside of the bus, they are the ones who find themselves in life. Yes. They yes. are the ones who are able to... In fact, some of them are making money while they are students. Some of them are already building houses while they are students. Some of them are riding their, mm -hmm. riding their cars already. While they, because they are doing something else, apart from just the classroom yes. work. And, yes. uh, and some of them are writing their books already. Some of them are doing their live broadcast on uh, Facebook. Some of them are reaching out to other things. Some of them are doing other degrees. Some of them are planning. You know, those are the people that will make it in life. And I think maybe what you have said is very correct. We need to, uh, our culture and our educational system has to encourage people beyond the classroom. Beyond, because mm. it, it, the, the, what that leads to is that people just want to have a paper or their degree. And once exactly. they have the degree, they think they are done. They think they are okay. But the degree is not what will give you life. It's not what will yes. give you the job. Most yes. people who get a job are people who have done something or read something beyond the degree. Exactly. In fact, um, your assertion is correct because we need to change our thinking from the short-sightedness to the long-sightedness. For instance, you are a student. Once you graduate, people would be asking you for experience. Where did you get experience from when, if you didn't get any job in school? Mm -hmm. If you're not able to make research in school, why are you going to get the experience from? So if our people can start thinking in the long term, while you are in school, even when there's no time, you create time because there's no time, but you have to create the time. So you try to get the experience while you are in school. So you can say, okay, even with this degree, I have this experience and this experience, and now I can get a job. So I believe once we can reorientate our people to thinking in the long term, almost all our problems would be would be solved. I mean, from the root cause analysis perspective, I think that is going to be the solution to our problem. Reorientation from the short term to the long term. Okay. So, what's your idea about medicine and pub and uh, business? Well, personally. I love both. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to pick one side, but I'm going to say the most important thing is value creation and economies of scale. So for instance, if I'm a doctor, if I can treat just 30 patients a day and I'm a businessman, I can create value to a thousand people. I think it would be better to stick to the business side because I create more value as um, a businessman. So I think it's all about value. I'll try to combine both. Definitely there's like medicine and there's business. I can combine both. There are pharmaceuticals, there are diagnostics, there are a whole lot of things. Consulting, there's research, you know. And you need business knowledge even in research because I consider project management a business concept. I consider risk management a business concept. And all these concepts are important in almost all sectors. So. Yeah, tell I me think, about. I think you are now You are now an ambassador for three organizations, two or three organizations. Well, I was Procter and Gamble CEO Challenge finalist this year, February. Tell me about uh, that. So, did you you competed in the Procter yes. and Gamble? Yes, yes. It, it is it like an international competition? It's a global competition. So, different countries are competing for regionally, and then the global one but i made it as a global challenge finalist like this wow yeah that is amazing that, <laughs> that is just yeah, so, mind-blowing so what yeah. what what are the kind of questions that the procter and gamble are interested in are they, are they more interested in the public administration kind of question or public health kind of question or medical kind of questions or business and com this commerce is pure business this is pure business and it's actually interesting that with the, with the help of God, I made it. I made it that far. In, in Poland, over like 300 students tried the exam and everything, and I was one of like 15, 20 people shortlisted. 
Okay. So it was really competitive. We had case studies. And these were not just foreigners. Studies. These were also uh, uh, Polish, people. Polish people. Polish people from the business school. From, ah, from business schools. Business school. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I could go get into the competition because of I was also doing business. Beautiful. So, yeah. So I got into the competition. I did all the exams and the case studies, the survey, story, analytics, no? everything, mathematics. Yeah. So, and I passed everything well. So you needed to do exams yeah. in business, mathematics. Yes, mathematics, case study solving. So like some case study. Okay. You had to solve case study. Yeah. It, it was really an inspiring and humbling experience. I met really good people from different universities. Yeah. It was good. So, uh, where did you do the final exam? In Warsaw. In Warsaw, the final, final, after all the different stages, was in Warsaw. Okay. The global. The global yeah. one. The I global mean, competition. There was still a stage after this one. This was more like a regional one. Okay. But I made a finalist the, the, for the for the challenge. Yeah. So the finalists, how many countries were represented? Well, I can't even remember because I was not focusing on. On, on other people, yeah. My part, uh, yeah. I just wanted to do my part and that's it. Now, is yeah. that, could that open a door for you? Like a door uh, into the world of uh, Procter & Gamble? Because Procter & Gamble is one of the most powerful uh, business organizations in the world. Yes. In fact, all of us at that stage were given the privilege to, to become workers, like to work for them. But okay. of course, I'm not ready, and yes. the exam expires after two years. Okay. So I will, if, even if I become ready and I decide to work, want to work for them, I would have to take the exam again. I see. Yeah. Of but course, and, Pro, to, to work for Procter and Gamble, that means you are automatically becoming a part of uh, an international brand. Yes, yes. But I, I think what I have from them is enough. I don't want to go into the type of business. You, you don't want them to limit your vision. Yes. My vision is for the, to combine the medicine with the business. So I'm thinking of startups. I'm thinking of going beyond <laughs> just working as a manager in Procter & Gamble. <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. You know, you are thinking, you know, I like the, your, think, your way of thinking because most people don't think like this. Most people would rather want to get a job. Procter & Gamble, because if they employ you in Procter & Gamble, people will be thinking, wow, I could become a manager in England or a manager yeah, in America. They offered good pay. They offered good pay. Yeah, they offered good pay, but of course I was not ready and um, my vision is beyond that. Yeah, that is, that's what I'm, admi I'm admiring about you because you Thank value you, vision more than money, which is exactly the thing I'm t I've been trying to teach the whole world through my... Uh, light yeah. It's really difficult to, 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 to teach someone vision of our money. <laughs> yeah, mo most people go for money. Yeah, so, so that's because that is a see. big, big temptation there, that, oh, wow, I became a finalist with Krupong and Gambo and I was offered a job, international organization, international job. You know, you could, go, you could even be sent back to Nigeria as a national director or something, but when you have a greater vision and you know that your vision is greater, you know that that will only turn you to a slave. It will turn you to what I call Uncle Sam system. You know, you know it I will just put book. you in the... I saw the book. <laughs> you saw the book, okay. It will just put the, you in the Uncle Sam on. system. Somebody that is working for salary. Mm. So, so um, but, you know, and working for survival rather than making a living, rather than creating opportunities for others. But apart from this Procter and Gamble, you also, I also heard that you are also rep representing, you know, what do you have to do with European Union or something like that? Or, you, so, you know, the Council ah, of Europe? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm involved with so many of their programs. The European Institute of Innovation and Technology, EIT. It's, it's a division of the European Union that fosters innovation and technology. So I've attended so many of their uh, summer schools, the camps, and... Of course, I'm building the social capital with the intellectual capital also. So I'm getting knowledge on startups, innovation, and things like that, basically. European 
what Institute of Innovation and Technology? European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Yes, now, yes. some students don't even know the thing is, is there. So is it your own initiative to be going there, to participate, to be participating in their programs and things like that? Do you just send yourself there or the school sent you? Or, you know, yep. how does that work? Yep. Yeah, so when they have like a program, they have one of the summer schools going on, you have to apply. And that's what I'm saying. One um, breakthrough or achievement leads to another. So when you apply, they check your CV, they check what you've done, they check your motivation letter, why you want to be in the summer school, and from that they pick you. So if you were not doing anything, and they have, and you, there's nothing for you to put up there, well, they will pick other candidates that they consider um, more, more aligned to the summer school or the and more promise, program. more promising. Yes, so, and that's the thing. So you have to start from somewhere. You have to, you know. Keep pushing. So apart from your three, the, the fact that you are studying in three universities, you still push yourself to go for extra uh, program like this European Institute of Technology. Yeah. They usually don't take time. Usually three days. Like I was in Barcelona. They pay for everything. I was wow. in Barcelona, IESC Business School, Trinity College Dublin in Ireland. I was in Heidelberg in Germany, I was in Cologne in Germany, and they pay for everything. So why not? But and when you go to for, when you were in Barcelona, how many Nigerians participated there in that program? None. None. You are the only one. Yeah. What about when but you were in Dublin? Yeah, limited spots. Yeah, limited I know. Sports. But how many when you were in Dublin, how many of Ni the Nigerians did you see there? None. None. Okay, when you were in Cologne, how many Nigerians did you be there with you? None. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is what I'm commenting about you that you are thinking outside the box. Mm. You know, some people will just be glad that they are doing their medicine. In summertime, they want to go home to see their mm. family, to relax. But you are pushing yourself. Yes, that is another sacrifice because I really love my people in Nigeria and um, I really want Nigeria to become better. But then every summer, I have the choice of going home. And I also have the choice of staying here and try to improve myself. So I usually pick trying to improve myself. Because when you go home, you just smile, hey, I'm, I'm in Europe. What do you get from, for that? Hmm. So I prefer to go for these programs. Hmm. The European Union is paying for it. Hmm. Many of their citizens don't even get the position. So why not? Because of I'm a student, I have the residency, I'm privileged to, to have the opportunity. And fortunately for, for me, they are not racist or something about the selection. They've, they've selected on merit for most of this program. So why not? Now, you talk a lot about startups. Yes. So you are into startups also? Yes. Ah, yes. Now, wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you are having 10 professions by the time you finish, you. <laughs> Tell me about startups. Are you, you are learning startups. How are you learning startups? Well, I've, I've always been interested about startups. You know, look at Facebook, look at Instagram. You know, they started from nothing and they created a, a global brand. But, of course, you have to have the right idea and you also have to validate the business need. So you don't create something and nobody's ready to buy it. So for now, I'm concentrating on IT, IT solution, which does not require land or some fiscal assets. So your IT, I mean your uh, startups will be mainly business startups or medical also. It's 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 actually a micro learning solution. I intend selling it B two B. It is a simulation that teaches business to health professionals, doctors, students. So by using real case scenarios, like we're going to choose um, situations that are of high impact and possibilities in the healthcare uh, um, setting, and we're going to try to teach them business concepts like project management using those 
scenarios. So for instance, you are a healthcare provider, you want to start a project about, let's say, sanitization in, the, in your clinic. So we're going to teach you how to start, you initiate the project, your project schedule, your project costs, like the timeline from throughout the whole stage to the closing of the project. And that's just basically the, uh, what it is. We teach also risk, risk management. We teach um, strategic negotiation to people in the healthcare industry. So it's going to be focused on healthcare scenarios. So we, we, we intend to sell the login to different medical institutions interested in teaching their students or staffs. And then they can just log in after payment, of course. And they can feel, they can, they can have the feeling of a real life scenario where they, they can, you know, learn business from the health perspective. Because right now, most of the doctors, not just in Nigeria or anywhere in the world, it's like they are totally cut off from business. Yes, it's unfortunate because that's actually how you can commercialize value. So if you, if you own a clinic, that's good. You could just, um, with business process management, you could optimize the process there and you don't want more. You are getting enough money and that's enough. But you could also think big, you could think of doing that in 10 places, you know, and increase value. You would employ more people, you would pay salaries to more families, you can help more people, you know. And of course, more patients also would be attended to because there's usually a deficit, like a huge deficit of doctors all over the world. And if you create more of these facilities, most likely you'll be able to staff them with doctors. <laughs> so, but that is more of engineering. Startups is more, has more to do with engineering. Mm -hmm. So you are still, it means that your engineering knowledge Either it is still helping you from Nigeria or you are just curious to learn more on your own here. How does that work for you? Well, well, I was trained. I was trained on design thinking. I was trained on financing a startup. I was trained on even micro learning. I was trained on so many of these concepts. And of course, even from the business aspect, I have complementary knowledge on startups actually it's more of it what i'm doing now so, it yeah it's more it yeah. but for yeah. it is closer to engineering than it is closer to business yes yes but actually if you want to start up something you actually don't need knowledge like aliba when he wanted to start uh jack ma sorry jack ma would say when he wanted to start alibaba you don't have to be the smartest you just need to get the right team the right people, people that know about it. Once you have the idea, try to sell it, try to discuss it. No, but in your in your own yeah. case, this startup is being developed by you or you you got the right by people. me. Uh -huh, that's by what me. I'm saying. I'm still trying to get the right people. I don't want to get the wrong people on board. So I'm still looking for the right team, team members, so I can move forward with the content. Because now I'm I'm in the I'm at the point where I have to create the content. I have the domain name medicpilot.com, medicpilot.pl. The name of the startup is Medic Pilot. So yes. I need to develop the solution more. I see. Beautiful. Now, what, why, 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 why are you, uh, what are you doing with uh, the young European scientists? Why are you recognized in the young European scientists? Well, as an ambassador also, encouraging research, encouraging research in the biomedical field. So I go to students in, in medicine, I tell them about the Congress. They could put up their um, research. They could like discuss it. They could discuss their research and then they could meet also people in the field of biomedicine. biomedicine. So that's basically what I do. As an ambassador, I talk I represent the brand and I encourage research. But it's like you want to maximize your stay in Europe completely. <laughs> Biochemistry, bio, uh, microbiology <laughs> and biomedicine. Medical, no, no, no. It's, it's a medical congress with a focus on biomedicine. So I'm just no, I'm just doing this. <laughs> you are maximizing your life. That's what I'm talking about. You are, 
yes, you know, you are yes. pushing yourself to we the limit. God. We thank God for that. Yeah, I'm trying to, to yeah. What next? What next? Do you what think next? it's a big opportunity? The fact that, so you are able to assess the fact that God gave you the opportunity to travel to Europe to study. Yes, yes. Because if you know that if you had been in Nigeria, especially with that kind of strike, you wouldn't have had Six all these point. opportunities. <laughs> yes, I think it was an opportunity and I want to use the best out of it. And I encourage also everyone in the diaspora, they should also try to maximize the, the opportunity they have around them, not thinking of the problem at home and how they can solve it. Because one way or the other, we still have stakes back in Nigeria. And one way or the other, our success would still be um, in that by the regression in the system back home in Nigeria. So we need to also think of how we can improve things back home. Unfortunately, some people in Nigeria think once you are abroad, you are their enemy. They think, oh, you, you are talking about Nigeria. Eh? Uh, come, come to Nigeria and come and be talking about research. Come to Nigeria and come and be talking about what is right. So because you are abroad, you shouldn't talk about the bad situation in Nigeria. So you become their enemy. But that is not how it should be. You should be able to discuss the problems. You should be able to encourage people to get their PVC, for instance, and vote. Because you're unable to vote does not mean you should not be able to encourage other people or families <laughs> and friends to vote. Say, so you, you come on, you come now, fly out the way. You are talking about Nigeria and you are there. You have light. You can eat. Your brain will work well now. Me, I don't have food to eat. My brain cannot work well. And, you know, you, you just won't know what to say anymore. So those that are abroad should try as much as possible to maximize their situations and also keep thinking about how they can help the country as a whole. Well, I want to encourage people who are watching us right now to go ahead and try to call in. I think, you know, some of you might want to contribute to our conversation. If you want to contribute to our conversation, uh, go to Facebook Messenger, look for a Move Agents, Facebook Messenger Move Agents, and when you get to move agents, um, you know, just write us that you would like to contribute to our conversation, you would like to talk, or you like to call in, and we will call you back. So if you want to contribute to this, this these are the kind of guys, like this young man, Adediro, that are giving me hope about Nigeria, you know. I, you know my dream is to gather a thousand of guys like this. And to be able to, you know, when you can gather a thousand of people like this, you'll be able to bring solutions to Nigeria. And, and there are many of them like that, all over the world and in Nigeria itself. And, uh, you know, what a great, great example. Just like last Sunday too, I had another very, very great, great example, exemplary. You said you are only 24, eh? 22. Why am I calling you 24? I can't just believe you are 22. <laughs> I've always got in two years to you. <laughs> I, you, you've told me already today, two, twice, that you are 22, but I'm still sticking to that 24. <laughs> we thank God. Is it true that you are still having, you are still working and having two jobs at the same time? Yes, I have two Despite jobs. everything you are doing, you still have two jobs? Yeah, yeah, but they are, they are removed. Hey, hey, Shineke! <laughs> Is that you are not having 24 hours, so? Well, I tried to manage. <laughs> I... I got into a fellowship program through the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, FOOD. So they got me an internship in um, Barcelona. So I was in Barcelona last month. I was working for a startup company as a business development manager. They said, oh, internship does not sound good. You would be representing the company, so we're not going to call you intern. We're going to call you business development manager. Beautiful. So I, I worked for them for one month. And I'm still working for them because I told them my education is my priority. I have to go back to Poland. And they agreed that I can work remotely from Poland because I already understand the job so well. I created a framework to work with really nice. They can see what I've done and what, you know, different colors, schematics. It's really nice. I'm working even still. And I would keep working for them for another two months. So, but that is but I work also uh, Barcelona. Is that not French, uh, Spanish speaking? Yes, Spain. But they, you, you use English there to talk to them. Yes, we all use English in the company. Okay, okay, okay. It's an international company. Yes, yes. Then you, and what is the other job you have? 
also I work as a market, as an associate for a market development firm, a German market development firm. Access <laughs> <laughs> so, She make it. You work on project basis. That what what? We work on project basis. So, for instance, if they have a, a client, let's say a pump producer, I'm the associate here, so they contact me and I try to get potential clients for the pump producer. So I I, I have a catalog of um, the clients. The, I mean, they, they already have the research, um, different contacts, and I contact them. I meet them. I make proposals, things like that. And I try to close the deal. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, sure. You are living in Poland, working in Barcelona and in Berlin, eh? Gem it's a German company, Germany. but I work in Poland. But you, you are situated in, in Poland, but you are working for a German company, then Barcelona company, and then you are still going to European Union and representing your school and being ambassador in two organizations and being Procter & Gamble representative. You are just vers versatile. Versatile. The word versatile is just on your head. Boom. On your forehead. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> are you still doing We're politics? Trying like you. We are trying to be like you. <laughs> hey. Versatile. I am really encouraged. Because this is what I understand as education. Mm -hmm. This is what I understand as education. I don't recognize education as classroom work. This part of education, but it's just background. It doesn't matter what you are studying. Engineering, medicine, it's just elementary. Because by the time I finished university, I discovered that university only gave me 20% of the knowledge I was having at that time. Mm -hmm. But after I finished university, talking about masters, now, 25 years later, or sorry, how many years later? 30, almost 30 years later after I finished my masters, after mm -hmm. I finished my university, uh, what I've discovered is that now, Whatever I study in university is only 2% of what I know. Mm. So where is the rest of 98% coming from? From self-development. Mm. From self-effort. Not from what pastors, I mean, not from what professors gave me, but from what mm. I went for and strive for and try to get for myself through self-development and self-education. And that is what you are demonstrating. If every Nigerian graduate will have the kind of attitude that you are having. Nobody will be looking for a job in Nigeria. Mm. Because you are creating relevance. Mm. You are creating value chain. You are not just creating value, but you have a whole value chain. As a matter of fact, you have a system of value chain. You know, all the things I'm teaching, that I'm trying to teach in my teachings, you are living it out. You are demonstrating it. And I am mm. so, just so excited, you know, that, uh, you know, you, you are making yourself, really, you know, you are the example, the prototype of what students are supposed to be doing, uh, uh, how they are supposed to be engaged, not just in Nigeria, but people who travel abroad as well, you know, so mm. this is just um, absolutely mind-blowing and, uh, you know, I'm absolutely encouraged by what you are doing, just, uh, you know, so what about the uh, what are the you know the business ideas and business engagement that uh, you are presently uh, involved with? Medic pilot, medic pilot. Can you show so, package it what the medic pilot pilot Katorian? Yes, we want to show, you sent us some papers about Bendik Pilot. I want to show it to the, to, to our audience. Yeah, Yes, go ahead and talk to us about this. So, Medic Pilot, in my vision, is a group of companies. So, I would have, by God's grace in the future, Medic Pilot Clinic, Medic Pilot Diagnostics, Medic Pilot... What have you? Pakaji still rise next time, Gavari. Yeah, go ahead. So Pakaji right rise. now, I'm thinking of Medic Pilot Micro Learning Solution. Okay. Based on my 
experience, that's true, that's true. my knowledge in the field of medicine and business. I'm trying to create a solution that teaches business from the medical perspective to healthcare personnel and students. Okay. So it is going to be very interactive. It is going to be very interactive learning because most of uh, the students maybe are not zealous enough to go to the medical school. But I think it's really important to be able to have some knowledge. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's important to have some knowledge about business, even as a medical personnel or student. And that is why creating this solution. We are going to be teaching in blocks, blocks of learning. So project management is a block. You don't need any initial knowledge in this in project management. We are going to teach project management from the initiation stage, submission of a project charter, the project schedule, project cost, the timeline, to the closing stage. So you are going to have a conceptual knowledge on how project management is from the healthcare perspective. We are going to use a practical scenario, for instance, the hand sanitization. You want to improve hand sanitization in your clinic. You are going to install the hand sanitization. You are going to buy the hand, sanitization, uh, the hand sanitizer. You are going to put a guideline in almost every wall of the clinic of how to properly sanitize the hand and like that to the end. Also, risk management, we are going to teach it also as a different block of learning. You don't need any prior knowledge to the subject matter. Strategic negotiation also, you don't need a prior knowledge. We're going to teach it in a very intuitive way to all healthcare personnel that are willing to, <laughs> to learn, of course. Right now, we're in the process of the um, business validation. We're trying to inquire from medical students and personnel if they are interested in such a solution. I have just 13 responses. So maybe that's not actually a very good sign. Is it? Is it? <laughs> is it on? Uh, how, is it on the online? Well, I have just like an introduction page now. Is it? Is it? Uh, how do you get it? If some people who are watching us want to go to that page to uh, express their interest. Yeah, I sent a link. You can subscribe. Once you go to the website, you can subscribe. What is the website? The well, it's a, it's a temporary website, but the link is very long. The ah, current okay, website okay. is medicpilot.com. Okay, medic medicpilot.com. That's the permanent site. But is not is it operational already? No, but there is an operational one I sent. Okay. Okay, so the one you sent, can we yes. show that? Can yes, we can. give it to public? Yes, you can. You can. Okay, exactly. I've got that link. Okay, we will try to to do that. What's your own Facebook contact? You will contact us. I did do already. Okay, we have it. We have it. Package that shit is funny, Beautiful. So, what are the competitive advantage of this proposal? Well, there are no such innovative and engaging solution right now on the market for healthcare personnel and students. I think there's a gap, a very big gap between the medical personnel and the business world. And that's what I'm trying to bridge. I'm trying to bring business and medicine closer. Of course, ethically, ethics would also be something we would teach through our platform. But we need to bring the business world and the medical world closer together and we're doing that with this platform and it's it's new it's novel it's not something that is common so we're going to be teaching these concepts and we hope would create value by doing so we're going to inspire um, medical students to create their hospital diagnostic centers different uh, value by learning business beautiful beautiful concept beautiful concept very very great so the ability for medical doctors not to be depending on salary but to be able to create their own platform earning i mean income uh, stream of income yes yes 
and to be also be able to add value and create value other than just being medical practitioners. Yes, even even improve their job process. For instance, you want to run a project, even as a doctor in the clinic. If you don't have project management knowledge, you can't do that effectively. Mm -hmm. So, what we're teaching is not just encouraging medical um, doctors to leave their practice. No. We are saying you can have something complementary. You can have a complementary knowledge that would aid your work. You can manage projects effectively. You can manage your hospital effectively with this um, knowledge. So, and um, do you think, though, that you'll be able to produce... Oy. Did we lose him? No, that is... Oh, he's sending us the... He's sending us the link. That's the link. Uh, wants me to hit a link. He's passed out to Umpress Lanham. Okay, so um, do you think, though, this your concept could be operational in Nigeria? Could be operated in Nigeria? De definitely, and that's, that is the whole idea of uh, IT, IT solution. It's not a fiscal asset. So once uh, like I, pro I proposed B2B model, so business to business. I plan to sell it to medical institutions and medical schools. Even nurses also would, would be a very big stakeholder in this. It can be operational anywhere. All you need is the, the, the login details. So once you pay, you can log in to the platform and you can enjoy this simulation. It's, it's almost real. You are going to take decisions and you are going to get results. Of course, also with some educational videos on each of these concepts, very brief but engaging. <laughs> Despite all these things that you are doing, how did you have time for politics? Who gave money? Who didn't give money? Uh, no, 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 to no, be no. Doing so, not politics. To be doing survey, <laughs> good governance, <laughs> as you call it, good governance. And how do you have time? Despite all these. Is, activities you are doing it is electoral studies <laughs> <laughs> it, it is not politics <laughs> no 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 i'm not into politics yet but of course it's really important to be involved with politics they decide our life so if you say i'm a doctor i'm not in politics you are going to be at a loss because they, they, they decide the policies they decide the decisions generally that influence even you as a doctor or a lawyer or a professor. No, no. I mean, it's all the same. Let's take me back to Nigeria because right now in Nigeria, mm. the reason you know the medical service is very poor. It is. But you okay, see, but the one of the reasons is because like I said, pastors, I mean, sorry, doctors are trying to make <laughs> money. Is the doctors are trying to make money aside by the side. Like do, said, some of them are setting up their own little thing at home. Some of them are selling Lego something. Some of them are taking something from the place. Some of them are waiting for patients to give them something to bribe them before they could do anything. So it's is that poverty is just driving doctors not to be faithful to their vow to their medical whatever vow Nigeria, is that. Nigeria is not a complex case. The problem is we're looking at the symptoms of the problem. Like I said, from the root cause analysis of Nigeria, starts in the mind. Okay. Which is which is absolutely true. All these are symptoms. Yes. These are symptoms. Yes. Asking the symptoms, but the root cause. See, if we kill all the leaders, all the corrupt leaders today in Nigeria, if we kill all of them, hypothetically, I'm not asking anyone to kill anyone. <laughs> but if we kill all the Nigerians, all the bad Nigerian leaders today. New ones would erupt. Why? Because of the problem is not with just the corrupt ones. Many of the uh, I participate, man, if I get there, I'm going to steal my own for my family, you see. That is the problem. Value of the system. Mind. The bad healthcare, the bad education, the bad uh, the corrupt people, the short sighted, they are all symptoms of the problem. Root cause, the problem is with the mindset of the average Nigerian. Value system, and, yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So we came on leaders today. There are new bad leaders that would come up because of the this mindset. They are going there to steal. You see? So the doctors also that are doing, they are trying to make ends meet by combining jobs. 
they are, they, are, they are not the problem. These are just, they're just trying to survive. That's just the symptom of, of the, the failed system. They're just trying to survive. You know, how would you explain a doctor earning less than 200,000? What can you do with that? No, but what I'm trying to say is that this is your solution. You mm. know, it can really help resolve that problem of desperation of these doctors. But the problem I'm thinking is, are you looking at it, even though it's IT solution? Mm. Well, again, if this, by God's grace, when this solution comes true, it would encourage entrepreneurial approach to problems. So, yeah. So, all these diagnostics, even machines, you know, for that that are meant to help the healthcare system. Once we can teach through this platform good business, then they can improve the healthcare system drastically with this knowledge. They can commercialize the healthcare system. You know, they can make insurance schemes that work, not failed ones that are that are that have been that have imploded. You know? They can make insurance schemes, they can make so many things, they can think of innovative ways to finance their practice, crowdfunding, um, different venture capitalists. You know, they can think out of the box. And once they can think out of the box, they will create value. And once they create value, we would see it. It would just be evident. Patients would benefit, they would benefit, everyone would be happy. But again, it's really difficult to do anything in Nigeria from my little knowledge of the country. Because of this mindset, the field mindset, you know, the poverty mindset, <laughs> the short-sightedness of uh, us as a people. So once we can change that mindset of the average Nigerian, I believe we are we are heading to the to the moon. Okay, when you talk about the short-sightedness, I think you are also referring to the inst the culture of instant gratification. Exactly. That is just the definition of short-sightedness. You want an immediate satisfaction. You want an immediate appeal. Instead of looking at things, oh, what's this decision about take? How would it influence me in the next four years? How would this decision influence me in the next ten years? You're like, forget that job. Let's take this two thousand. We'll buy in Kobe. Eh? We'll buy in Kobe and uh, beer. That would be okay. You see? Because once they get there, we're not even sure if they will, they will do the right thing anyways. So it's better we take this 4,000 and we know we've gotten our own share of the national cake. You see? So the instant satisfaction they want to get, you know, once we start changing that thinking, I believe we are, we are, we are going to be more progressive as a people. Uh... How many Nigerians do you have in your class, in your year? Uh, well, uh, uh, about three, because I'm trying to because they don't see themselves as Nigerians. Maybe they, they are from Ireland, and they don't, ask, they don't see themselves as Nigerians, you know. I'm okay. trying to subtract okay. some of the Nigerians we have lost. <laughs> oh, so the Nigerians who are from Ireland, England, they, they don't see themselves as Nigerians again? No, 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 they, they, they don't. We've lost, we've, so many people have seceded from the country, you know, they've, they've, they've lost hope in the country. They don't even want to associate with fellow Nigerians. Wow. You know, the country has, has really become what it shouldn't. <laughs> even though you are in the same class, they don't see themselves as Nigerians again no, because they carry no. passport of England, passport of Ireland, passport of Germany. Unfortunately, they don't, but... At, we are about five, at least in my class, from different years, maybe more, maybe less. Five, about five. Do you <laughs> think, though? Do you think, though, that you will ever go back to Nigeria? Well, it's a very big question. <laughs> okay. I believe I want to go back to Nigeria. I want to change. Things I want to do the right things because it's really disturbing what's going on in Nigeria. But also, I need to also consider um, the 
put this thing. Because it's one thing to think I can go and change the world. Fella tried, he has died now. You know, Danny Fawemi tried. So many of our greats, they tried and they died trying. And they didn't change anything. So the real question is, are the people of Nigeria ready for the change they, they aspire for? Or they think they want? You know, so that's a big question. If I believe... No, if you are talking here, about are they ready or not, that one is your banker. They are not ready. They are only uh -huh. talking. They are only talking about it, uh -huh. but they are because not ready for what it takes. My impact in Nigeria, without the support body, would just be like pouring water in a, in a basket, you know. So, one man cannot change the country. I have so many options right now: Canada, America, uh, um, Africa. Yeah, but. Uh, it's unfortunate that Nigeria might not be ready for me, so I will try. I will try to make it work in Nigeria. I will try to get back to Nigeria, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, because let's assume I'm in the medical system now in UK. Do, do they really need me? I mean, I'm good enough, but do they need me? Can't they do without me? Are there no other doctors that can attend to patients? Also, but Nigeria needs me, not just me, but other Nigerians that are watching now in diaspora. They need our expertise, they need our thinking, they need our approach to solving situations. You know, from the research method and strategies approach, informed decision, informed solutions to problems. You know, not just think, ah, it looks like this is the problem, let's attack it. No, you plan, you look at, you conceptualize the problem. You look at it from a multi-dimensional perspective, and you try to solve the problem. So I, I hope Nigeria becomes more ready to, for, for, for the new generation of progressive people, because they, they have other options, you know? They have other options. So Nigeria might be losing another talented young man like this now. They've lost so many. They lost so many. So many fought for Nigeria and they died in it. And Nigeria is still worse than it was. So I've stopped thinking the problem of Nigeria is the leaders. Because the leaders are just a function of the mindset of the average Nigerian. So once... <laughs> The thinking is wrong. The thinking of the average man. It would keep producing the wrong type of people. You know, because... Uh, you are so... You are narrating my book now. <laughs> I wrote a book on what I you are must, talking about. I must read it. I must read it. <laughs> but it's exactly what it is. Because, like I said, once you kill all the leaders... The new set of seats will come up and find <laughs> our, our, our national uh, resource. So, once we start changing our thinking, believe me, everything will, will start going fine. It starts from even littering the floor, just putting paper on the floor. You know, and you want change. You are just putting paper on the floor and littering the whole floor. You know, it starts from our mind the way we, 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 we look at things. You are thinking like a 50-year-old man. <laughs> and, not, <laughs> and even a lot of the 50-year-old men cannot even think on the level that you are thinking. Well, I hope more people think like this. <laughs> and and, and uh, it's yeah. just like, for, for me, all those other pe people in medical schools or in colleges who are studying in Europe, it's just like they are wasting their time compared to the way you have maximized your something by the way let me see if anybody is calling from anybody wants to call from uh, from anywhere from nigeria from europe if anybody wants to call please go to facebook messenger go to facebook messenger and look for move agents move mm -hmm. agents move agents one word move agents write that in facebook messenger look for it and then uh, write to us that i want to call can i call 
and then we will call you back. We will call you back because this conversation is, please send it to your friends, send it to your family members, send it to your children, especially if you have brothers, uh, sisters, or you know, siblings, or people who are students, or who are young, who want to, you know, yeah, we need to exchange this, we need to send this to as many people as possible. Uh, your parents, of course, they would like you to come to Nigeria, or they don't want you to come. Well, they initially, they, were, they wanted me to come, but now I think they are very worried with the situation in the country, and of course, they have to look out for my, my good, <laughs> They've also invested a lot, which, of course, if I go to Nigeria as a doctor, mm -mm, I can't get that money back till I die as a doctor in Nigeria. So it makes no sense from the capitalist <laughs> perspective to, to go back to Nigeria to work as a doctor. But you are having so many, so, so many, mm, so, so many ideas, so, so many projects. And it will also be, of course, a waste for you to go to Nigeria and not be able to realize all these wonderful mm -hmm. concepts that you are coming up with right now. But, okay, the startups, I, but, you, you, you know, but you are not going to, start, I mean, to stop at the, this particular startup that you are working on no, now. No, no, no. In fact, 90% of startup fails. So, of course, I believe it would, it would be successful, and that's the mindset. But I'm also ready for if it fails. So that's why I said the Medic Pilot is a brand name. I want to get something right, and once I get something right, I can do other things from that. So I have the website, the, real, the main domain, I bought it already, Medic Pilot, because that's my vision. I, I've seen the name, Medic Pilot. So why pilot? Medic pilot? Why pilot? What is pilot? Pilot is control. Pilot is control. You know... Medic pilot, does that mean medical control? control? Yes. That is just what it means. And that's the vision. So it would be... In the, it would be in the, I could open a clinic. I could open a diagnostic center. I could open an IT, like virtual health service. I could do so many things. But the name is Medic Pilot. So Medic Pilot Clinic, Medic Pilot Learning Solution... Medic pilots, diagnostics, medic pilots, what have you? So that's the vision and medical control. Medic pilot, yeah. Me I mean, pilot means control. Pilot means control. Yes, I mean, like like a pilot for like aeroplane. So medic pilot, medic means medicine, isn't it? Yes, yes. Which we could say we could interpret the whole thing as medical control. Yes, uh, yes. So that means you want to control the medical market or medical world. <laughs> you could see it like that. <laughs> you are not far from the division. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Good vision, good vision. Brilliant, brilliant. How did you get to know about Pastor Sunday? Well, I've, I've seen so many videos about you i've seen i've read a lot about you already with what you're doing with the addiction the drug addiction that's really good the impact is really good i, I really like that and i hope more nigerians around the world can you know have that impact impact you know can effect love you have i stand for i stand with your vision i share your vision of Um, I know you're the pastor of one of Ukraine's biggest church, <laughs> and I really like how you speak speak out and how interested you are in innovation. You know, most pastors just stick to pastoring. I just go to church, I preach, people fall under anointing, and that's it. In innovation, I like people going beyond what is the status quo, you know, good governance, like I said, I like people that also are in support of good governance and not just keeping quiet. You say you're a pastor and things are going wrong, I keep 
keep quiet, I'll be able to voice out these things. And I like everything you've been doing, and I, I, I pray God strength, strengthens you more and keep you on the right track. So, um, you also studied with one of my ace disciples, <laughs> disciples he, that is living with me here in oh, my I'm house so to pray. <laughs> is it true that you went to the same school with uh, Anujo? Yes, I did. He was my senior in high school. We were in the boarding school together, yeah. No! <laughs> it was boarding yes, school? Yes, yes. Yes, boarding school for six years. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Boarding school. So you know and know Joe very well? Yeah, I mean, of course, the distance between seniors and juniors were not that um, close. But of course, I know him. He used to help with organizing things in, in the chapel of the school. So I knew him like that. He, how many years senior of yours was he? Well, I, I can't say now, but at least more than two, three years, or even more. Wow. So he was he was my he was my real senior. <laughs> <laughs> it was not one year senior, not two years. No, no, more, more, more. Okay. It was not, no, 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 he's, he's my senior. <laughs> <laughs> real, real senior. Yeah, yeah. And, but why did you study, because he studied, he studied, he's doing PhD now, he's doing postgraduate. Oh, that's great. Yeah, in, in uh, psychiatrics, but also he's doing yeah. a lot of other things as well, just like you, very versatile, yeah. very versatile. Yeah. Doing a lot of things. In fact, he was a pastor also in this country. <laughs> he wow, was a pastor great. already in this country too. And wow. uh, he's doing a lot of good job. So, but why did you study engineering in Nigeria and now you are studying medicine there? Yeah. How do you understand? How do you come? Well, I always understand? wanted to study medicine. Huh? But I, I always wanted to study medicine. But my mom wanted me to study chemical engineering because she works in the oil sector and she felt like that would make me have a better life you know so i really appreciate that <laughs> but god created an opportunity for me to study medicine eventually so no but you are not studying chemical in nigeria you, are, you said you are studying mechanical Chemical, chemical oh, engineering. Okay, it was chemical you were studying in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. But somebody told me that those engineering courses in Nigeria that they are more theoretic. Yes, yes. Of course, there are some practical sessions, but yeah, more theoretical. There are some fields, but more theoretical, definitely. Yeah. So you went to a boarding school. <laughs> yeah, so when the boarding school together. Was that boarding school in the Korodu or where? In Korodu, yes. But your parents in the, were in the uh, bush. <laughs> no, but how can you be living in Korodu proper? Your parents were living in Korodu too now. No, my parents were far, far, far from there. Okay. Yeah. Though they are from Lagos State. Yes, yes, yes. So your parents were living in Lagos State and you were also going to Lagos State School. Yeah, but you know, it's like the village, you know, it's like in the bush. Of course, the school is very good, top standard school. One of the best in Lagos from my perspective. Um, but yeah, it was like secluded from the whole um, traffic, you know, of the world, just in the bush, fenced enclosed and we had everything we had the labs we had everything it was great in fact that school is one of my best um, educational institution <laughs> what's the name of the school so that well, some people might be watching and they yes. might you know they might be encouraged by that because they already know two graduates from that school 
Because some people want to be sending their children back to uh, school in Nigeria. Babington Macaulay Junior Seminary. What, Bab? Babington. Babington. Macaulay. Macaulay. Junior. Junior. Seminary. Semin it's a seminary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but not seminary like seminary. There is a focus on the religious and moral and also academic performance. So it's like the mission is like religious, excellent religious, moral, and academic um, standing. <laughs> Seminary or school? Seminary. <laughs> Seminary. <laughs> so maybe that's why uh, my senior, Anu Ojo, is a pastor. <laughs> 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 is it secondary school or primary school? Secondary school, secondary school. But why didn't they just call it secondary school? Well, I think it's because of the vision of the founding uh, fathers. Did you say Wellington? Babington. Babington. Yeah, B A B I N G T O N. Babington. Is that a Nigerian name or English name? Well, uh, English name, I presume. English name. Babington Macaulay. Yeah. Macaulay also is English name. Yeah. I think it's like the, 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 some relations with Abbott Macaulay, something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he's the son of Abbott Macaulay. Related in one way or the other. Okay, okay. So you think that is one of the best schools in Lagos? Yes, in fact, I would say the best. You could, I could be sentimental because I went there, but one of the best schools in Lagos. What percentage of pass students graduates uh, pass in your school? In that school? Well, why I was there it was really I. Most of them did well. They got into some universities after the high school education. They passed WIEC. Yes, Most of them I did very well with the Cambridge O level. I did Cambridge level myself, you and I had Cam Cambridge A level, O levels. O levels, yes, O levels. And most of the people did Cambridge O levels. Yes, and it did very well. I myself, I did Cambridge levels. It was optional, of course, and WIEC also. Like the Cambridge levels, I did very well. I had five distinctions. Of course, people had seven distinctions. I had five distinctions, two credits, so altogether seven papers. So that's like really good. You know, so and at the Wyek, Wyek also. Which one was more difficult? Well, because none, none of them was difficult. <laughs> but because you are well trained. Yes, yes. In fact, I was not in. I was not in. I was not prepared for the Wyek because I was doing Cambridge A levels, so. Seven selected based on our performance in the Cambridge levels to write uh, the A levels within six months. Wow. Yeah, so so I, I didn't focus on the YA, but overall the school is good and I did also jam and I was second on the on the merit list for the for the jam, like into uh, chemical engineering, University of Lagos. So that was really good. Yeah, when I, I also did jam and I was taught in you for University of Ife. I was second. <laughs> so I won. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, I yeah. art, art department. <laughs> that's really good. Yes, uh, good. department of art. But you almost engineering. Chemical engineering, Chemical University of Lagos. Okay. Yeah. Wow, amazing, amazing. Good job, good job. So, uh, what would you like to tell people who are watching us today? Well, I encourage Nigerians and all the viewers all around the world to shift their thinking from the short sightedness to the long sightedness. So, from a myopic short term view to a long term view. You don't have to see something to believe it. 
just have a, a vision for at least more than five years and try to pursue it. And in doing so, in having a vision, your immediate um, actions would be tailored towards such vision. People would not understand. Why are you doing this now? You don't need it, right? But you just keep doing it. So I encourage all the viewers to have a vision. Try to create it. Even if you just feel it's impossible, dream it and work towards it. Wow. Do you have an association in Poland of Nigerian students? <laughs> in fact, one of my friend, Abdul Samad Ashamu, he was pushing for it and right now he's creating, I mean, we are the founding fathers, we are creating a Nigerian association of medical students in Poland. Uh, we are even thinking of something bigger, maybe the old Nigerian association because there is really no, nothing to bring us together as Nigerians. It's really sad. It's really sad. No, I think that's very sad because 25 years ago, yes, I was in Poland. Oh. Uh, that was not the last time I was there, but 25 years ago when I was there, I was visiting with Nigerian Student Union, but that time it was communism still. Mm. And I was just coming to Europe and everybody was not so independent, so they used to have it. But when the schools became independent, the euro became free, you know, you know, everybody you know, everybody just got that, everybody just started doing their own thing. Mm. So I think the kind of uh, you know, I think people someone like you, you should it would have been very beneficial for all the student body of Nigeria in that country to be doing the same thing you are doing. Can you that is the you? plan. Yeah. That is the plan, and I'm really supporting my friend because it is his vision. He said we should make a, a community. You know, he has written like the all the you know the files on how it would look like, and I've supported him. And hopefully, we are going to launch officially. We would register also with the university, and we can inform other students about possible opportunities within the country. We could even advocates for students that are maltreated or disadvantaged in one way in one way or the other so that's the that's the that's the goal and hopefully we we'll to succeed that creating such uh, platform you are in loads yes and we pronounce it wood <laughs> it's, L, it's pronounced wood the l is with a stroke so it's woo. So L O D Z, Woosh. L yes L with a stroke O D Z, Lords. You call, you call it Lords? No, we call it Wood. But Woosh. yeah, people call it Lords. Foreigners that don't know the correct <laughs> pronunciation call it Lords. But you call it Wood. Wood. Woosh. Wood. <laughs> you tried. You tried. You did it well. <laughs> Dobje, Dobje, Dobje. Dobje, Dobje. Yes, I used to, I used to know a little bit of uh, Polish when because I had students with me who the were language who similar. Are, I was living with uh, Polish students for five years. Mm. We were in the same apartment. Mm. We were in the same uh, dormitory, so they were always speaking their their Polish language. So I picked up a little bit. And we don't say similar. Ukrainian language and very Polish similar, language, yeah, they are similar. similar. Many Ukrainians are even here getting jobs now. Yes, yeah, a lot of Ukrainians are moving to Poland. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I have I had very good friends from Poland. Oh. Very good friends. <laughs> I almost married a Polish girl. <laughs> almost. She she's so stubborn. She will not become born again. <laughs> she, said she doesn't want to become politic, uh, Pentecostal. She she insisted that she is Catholic. That's it. She oh, <laughs> huh? Polish people are mostly Catholic. She said she cannot change. I said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> even love, even love will not make you to change. He said, no way. Let me go to your Poland. <laughs> Thank God I did it. Oh. But she was so believed in that Catholic something. Mm -hmm. And um, well, you know what? 
Yes, beautiful. Close or beautiful? Beautiful, echo. I didn't let con. I didn't let con. Okay, let con. Okay, okay. I didn't know. But I didn't know I got it right. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are an inspiration to me. You inspire all of us also. So keep doing what you do and God will strengthen you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You inspire me so much. I mean, you give me hope. In the in the fact that not only most of us Nigeria that we still have Nigerians, but I'm looking for one Nigerian guy now that uh, I read about him. That he also very brilliant guy. Finished one of the universities in Nigeria. He came from a poor country, family mm. background, got scholarship to South Africa, mm. uh, and then after South Africa, I think he moved to Germany or Europe somewhere doing science. I forgot about. I read about him. I want to, I am I'm tracking all of you, all you guys who are doing well, because one day I'm going to gather all of you together, you wait. God give us life and uh, strength. I'm going Amen. to gather all the great, uh, uh, most brilliant Nigerians everywhere, and we're going to create a new country there. We are going to create Amen. Nigeria. I hope Nigerians are ready. <laughs> well, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing with the live broadcast and with the recordings and the books. I'm writing a lot of books. Uh, by the time, you know, God allows me to leave Ukraine, I'm going to do a fundamental work on uh, propaganda and mm. the orientation of the country and on uh, changing the mindset of the people. I'm going to pay a lot of attention to that. And we're going to be doing a lot of uh, media outreach to really broadcast, like I'm doing now. All, all Nigerians are not watching me and they are not familiar with what I'm saying, I mean, even with who I am. Yeah, but you see, there's no internet. There's no internet, no internet to watch. <laughs> and you see, it's sad. This should be a basic community. It's an infrastructure. It's just like having a road or, you know, this is this is the future. Yeah. You know, you could read books. Well, you could whatever it's going so to take, by the grace of God, by the time I'm ready, whatever it's going to take, we're going to do it. We're going to give it. Mm. If it's going mm. to take me putting all these messages on every radio station and television, we're going to do it. If it's going to take me, anything that's going to take, we're going to do it. Because if it's going to take me to translate them into the local languages and put them in every village, we are going to do it. We are going to change the mindset of our people. Mm -hmm. The people we call Nigerians now, they are damaged. Mm -hmm. Nigerians now we stole Dr. Sunday, I feel you. Now stole me. If I come to if I go to Nigeria now, they will kill me because the things that I will be telling them, hmm. they it's, will it's think sad. I am the one who is wrong. Hmm. Imagine the values Imagine. that I will be proposing to them will make them to think that I don't understand anything that I am mad. That's what they tell me every day on hmm. my on my comment session. That's what they say. They think I have lost my mind. All the proposals and the ideas and things I'm talking about. So they have been damaged. They are damaged. They don't know what is wrong and what is right anymore. But... The greatest battle yes, with, with, with the mind of an African man. Sorry, go ahead. The greatest, battle, the greatest battle is with the mind of an African man. Look at what Professor PLO Lumumba, this professor in Kenya, see what he's been doing. And still... He went to campaign for a political position. And he was what? sharing ideas. He was sharing ideas. He did over 250 tower meetings sharing ideas. And the guy sharing money won. You he see? Lost, yeah. The greatest, yeah. The, the greatest war with an African man is with his mind. The mind. The mind. And I hope we can overcome. I, I really feel you. I hope we one day overcome this problem. Sometimes you tell them and they will be fighting for the oppressors. You know, you are telling them the right thing and they will be fighting for the oppressors. No, I want to suffer. You know, I was campaigning for those candidates I thought were good for Nigeria. You know, and 
you know, the mind is so closed. No, it has to be this party or this party. I said, no, you have more options. Why do you want to suffer? No, I want to suffer. This is, these are the people that can win. And because of that, I would, I would vote them, you know? So it's really difficult to convince the mind. What you can do is to plant a seed of reflection. And that's what you are doing. And that's the best you can do. You can only plant a seed that, hmm, they can think, oh, maybe this guy is saying something that might make sense. You know, maybe this guy has a point. And once you have the mindset that, oh, I can't change anyone's mind, I can only plant a seed of reflection. They are going to go with the approach that, no, they won't change their mind. But even if they think I'm crazy, I will deliver my message and move on. Because I know I cannot change their mind. I can only plant a seed of reflection. And that's what I'm also trying to do in the little capacity I can. I'm trying to make this research about the influence of bribery on voters' decision in Nigeria. Once I make it finish, I publish it to Electoral Studies Journal. I would also send it to the, to the media in Nigeria. If they like, they should publish it. If they like, they should not publish it. I've done my part. And, and I feel okay about that. I can't change everyone. I can only plant a seed of reflection. So, Dr. Sunday Adelaide, I'm really proud of you. Keep doing what the good things you are doing, regardless of how it might seem. But, of course, unfortunately, those that know the right thing also are keeping quiet. And it discourages those that are doing the right thing also. Those that are doing, uh, that should be encouraged with likes or the comments of support would keep quiet. They will sit back, even when they know, but this guy is saying the right thing. So those that have the wrong ideas are the ones coming to write rubbish. And no one is fighting for the right thing. So hopefully our people will be able to stand up to what is right in the future. We're on the right track, talking to people, trying to plant this seed, and trying to to do what is right at all levels. Wow. I'm so encouraged. Thank you for coming to my program today. And thank you for doing your best to shine the light of uh, a new Nigeria and a new generation Nigerian with this active, a lot of myriad of activities that you have and with all your efforts to do the best, to study, to, I mean, you are just, you know, you are just an fact, I'm going to recommend this video to be, you know, given and everyone that's watching, please, anyone that's watching, let's put this video in the inboxes of everybody. Send this video to all everybody you know. Let young people know that if they put in the effort. Because this is not what the pastors are teaching the pay them in Nigeria. The pastors are teaching mm. them in Nigeria to pray for viral, to pray mm. for pencil, to pray mm. for petition, to pray for miracles. Instant mm. gratification. They are miracle, mm. miracle, miracle. Everything God has to do it. Pray, God will do it. We are praying. Mm, yes. Exactly. So instead of working hard like this young man is done. You know, and you know, this young man is smarter than most of these big so called GOs and bishops that are just deceiving people by giving them hope, you know, that God will do everything for them without them doing mm. their best. Well, um, thank you so much, everybody, for coming today. And those of you who want to receive and be receiving our messages, you know, send us your telephone, send us your WhatsApp number and we'll be sending you our messages, the compressed one, so that you don't need to spend so much data on it. Uh, we'll be sending them to you. Our telephone, our WhatsApp number is plus 38098596-3838. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, and thank you so much to Adib Dino, Adib Meko. Thank you, Dr. Adib. Sunday Adilaja. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Please, I wish you success in all your endeavors. Bye. Bye, sir.